Battle English at WeSpeakEnglish.com, where the pen is mightier and the language is the true battleground. There will be three rounds. Round one is Critique Combat. Round two is the Grammar Gauntlet. Round three is the Lesson Showdown. Remember, this is a fun, friendly, educational battle. Discussion of topics, questions, and answers is encouraged. And for everyone watching at home, you can learn more about Battle English at WeSpeakEnglish.com. Are you ready? In today's battle, we have Daniel, Thunder from Down Under, taking on Anna, the Avenger. The judges of today's battle are Kirill, the Bearded Linguist. And the second judge today is yours truly, Christopher Chris Americos. Critique Combat. In this round, we will show you short clips from YouTube videos, and you need to identify mistakes, correct errors, and explain how the topic could have been taught better or improved. Remember, points will be awarded for correctly identifying and correcting mistakes and for insightful and constructive critiques. So, Anna was first to the meeting, and that means that she goes first. So, we proudly submit our bid to host World Expo 2020 in Yekaterinburg, a dynamic and promising city. Our bids organizing committee has the full backing of the Russian government. So, Anna, what did you find in this clip? Okay, um, I didn't find any specific grammatical or speaking errors, but I did find that his accent was extremely heavy and hard to hear. It almost came across a bit drawing, drawling, pardon me, like D-R-A-W-L-I-N-G. So if he was my student, I would say he does have a really good sense of confidence when he speaks. I do find him a dynamic speaker, kind of like Trump. I know people disagree with them, but I find Obama, Trump, Putin all really dynamic. I think sometimes we're too critical of powerful people. We don't recognize how good they are, what they do. But I also think he, uh, if he would put a little more space between his words and have a bit more enunciation and also a more natural flow to his sentences. And also he was kind of making fists and having his hands low. I think if he's going to have body language, if he would make it closer to his face, uh, that would be better. Wow, those are some really insightful critiques because when I saw this clip, I definitely wasn't thinking about those things. This is going to give me a lot to think about. Thank you. Kirill, any comments on that? Uh, yeah, that's uh, that's very uh, a nice explanation of the mistake that they have. But maybe you can point out maybe some specific. You say that there are some pronunciation mistakes and pronunciation errors. Maybe you can tell us no, about some. I didn't some... find a specific one, to be honest. So maybe Daniel can grab the throne on that one. I just have to check with you. Was that um, an English clip or was that? No, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He was speaking English in that clip. Yeah. English. <laughs> wow. I had to shake my head a little bit when I was first listening to it. I thought, wait a second, is that Russian? What language is it? <laughs> um, so I didn't find exactly any, any grammatical errors, but um, his pronunciation was absolutely shocking. Very, very bad. I could hardly understand what he said. I think as he proudly submit and then the full backing, like I could, I could hardly understand what he was saying. So Grammatically, it sounded correct, but the pronunciation was very bad and I could hardly understand it. Mm -hmm. When I said proudly submit, mm -hmm. it was nothing like that. The sound was not proudly to submit. <laughs> it was like that. And then he said, I've got the full backing, which I could barely make out. The full mm -hmm. backing in Jewish like, like mm -hmm. it was completely so really bad pronunciation. I could barely understand. Um, but grammatically, I think it was okay. The sentence structure with the words were okay, I think, from so what I could understand. I have a question for both uh, challengers. Do you think that that was a pre-written speech for him? Yeah, for sure. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he'd memorized it. Me and Daniel agreed on everything so far. All right. Those are great responses. Let's go ahead to the second clip. And Daniel, you'll take the lead on this. Sometimes clients have to explain me something, so they uh, voice message me on WhatsApp or they send me a video, you know, of their funnels or of their profiles, and I'll just give them feedback. I usually prefer working on a computer because typing is easier, looking up things is easier. Oftentimes it's just the phone when I'm like waiting somewhere. So the first mistake I could hear, he said, explain me. He, he, he didn't say explain to me with the preposition. Very common mistake 
uh, my students make. Uh, he was he seemed very fluent, very confident, but that's the one mistake that I saw. Explain me, he said. He said, explain to me. That's what I found. All right. Can okay. I any add? Yeah, he also used like incorrectly. For example, instead of saying the cow is like a cat or something, he used it how I sometimes do. We're going to like go here and then like do this. So that was an incorrect use of like. I also think it was a bit distracting because he wasn't making much eye contact. And so I think if you're going to shoot a video in a car like that, either have someone in the, you know, set up the camera like that or don't be driving and have someone point at you and be able to make eye contact or just don't shoot it in the car. I think you lose a lot without the eye contact, but that's just my opinion. Okay, so do you think his use of like was a mistake or a filler word or like he should have avoided it or it was a mistake? Um, I think it was a mistake, definitely in terms of formal in, um, formal English, but I do think it is popular on YouTube for people to use slang words. I feel like that is increasingly common, you know, shows like the Kardashians or something, they swear or use casual words and a lot of YouTubers do that. Um, so, you know, it's definitely a mistake in terms of formal English, but I do think using informal English can sometimes be conscious when people are trying to make accessible content. True. Good point. Okay. Okay. And uh, I have questions uh, to both of the contenders. What do you guys think about his pronunciation? What do you think about that? Do you have anything to, to me, it sounds it? decent, like almost like a, a native speaker. I do think it could have done with a bit more spacing and emphasis between words. I think if I was actually trying to take advice out of it, I would have to really zone in. Um, it wasn't pronunciation that sort of held my attention. It could do with a bit more spacing and enunciation, but he sounds basically proficient like a native speaker to me. Mm -hmm. Daniel, anything to add? I see eye to eye as well. The same comment, same. Uh, he's speaking very fast and I could tell he wasn't a native, but he's very, um, he, his level is very high of English. And um, like um, he, he, it would work better if he slowed down and spoke more slowly. So I totally agree with you, yeah. Thank you very much. And I guess we can get to the next link, right? Yeah. Two negative words or a negative verb and a negative in a sentence. So if, you, if you've heard that saying, I didn't do nothing is wrong, you're right, it's not standard pronunciation. But in this accent, you would be expected to always use double negatives. You would be expected to say, I didn't do nothing, rather than I didn't do anything. People just wouldn't say that, it would sound a bit wrong. All right, Anna, we're ready for your response. Okay, um, I didn't see any particular errors, um, but I saw obviously she was teaching things by saying the incorrect, but I'm assuming that was intentional because it was a you know teaching English video focused on that. I do think she could have done with a lot more enthusiasm. And this was just a bit drab, like I definitely wouldn't have followed it. Um, you know, even mentally, let alone follow the channel. And it just seemed like really, like a really dry piece of bread or something. Okay, that's, wow. That's a critique. Uh, <laughs> awesome. Daniel, do you have anything that you'd like to say about this? Yeah, so she was teaching, um, she said, the example, I didn't do anything, which is correct. And then she said, uh, another way to say it is I didn't do nothing with a strong accent. But she was teaching it like it was correct to say that, but that's very incorrect English to say, I didn't do nothing. Um, that's really slang, street talk, which we, we would call very incorrect English. So that surprised me the way she was teaching it confidently, like really confidently saying, this is the way you can say it. Uh -huh. um, I would be recommending you shouldn't talk like that. You might hear people talking incorrectly on the street. This is the way I would teach that way. But this is incorrect English. If you want to speak the correct way, the proper way, um, like for that example, I didn't do anything, not nothing, for example. Uh -huh. But I, other than that, like you said, more expressive as well. Looking at the camera, um, more intensity. I agree. Yeah. Do you think that's a mistake or do you think that that is an acceptable variation in that type of English or that aspect or accent of English? It's it's a mistake in the correct English, like when you're teaching, but you will hear people, natives, speaking incorrectly. So I think it's a mistake to say that. 
Yes. Okay. I have a question as well. So, uh, Daniel, you mentioned that uh, this was a mistake that uh, uh, some people might say that, right? Might use this, uh, this double negation, but uh, in general, this is not correct. So, and here I have a question. How do we identify what is correct and what is not correct? That's a, yeah, that's a good question. Like, as you say, street talk natives would say this, I didn't do nothing. Um, so, but I would have to say it's incorrect to say that. Um, that the correct way to speak proper, proper English would be, I didn't do anything, the negative and the positive. So I would say it's incorrect English. And if you want to speak correctly, this is the way to say it. Yeah. Oh, but uh, do we have some kind of numbers? Do we know how many natives use double negation? How many uh, native doesn't? For example, if let's say 60% of native use double negation, but in grammar books, uh, there is a rule that you can't use double negation. Is it still incorrect? Um, first of all, I, I, I don't think 60% would be mm -hmm. using double negation, maybe 10%. Mm -hmm. Because just to, as Chris and well, I, as we all know, speaking to natives, mm -hmm. that's a huge uh, alarm bell when someone says <laughs> that. And when I'm speaking to natives, it I hardly ever happens. Like 10, 2% of the time I, I'm speaking to natives. So it's very rare, um, and unless you're talking to people in the street who are from a different background, different level, um, it's more common. It, it depends who you hang out with, I suppose. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so okay thank you very much. So, mm -hmm. so you think it's a socioeconomic indicator? Yeah, that could be it. Yeah, exactly. So even though people might do it, you would advise people not to do it? Yes, exactly. Okay. I would advise people not to speak that way. To, to add to your image, first impression, the, the way people judge you as well, especially if you're going for a job interview, if you talk like that, you won't get the job, basically, yeah. Yeah, thank you very much. It's, it was very, uh, very nice answer. Thank you very much for that. Thank you for your opinion. And uh, can we get to the next one, I guess, right? You got a Lamborghini, you ain't got no license, you ain't got no license plates <laughs> on it. You got unlicensed weapons and pounds of weed in there. But the kids are seeing that because of who they are, they thinking that's cool. All right, Daniel, it's your turn. Two, I found two, uh, not mistakes, but the way he was speaking. Uh, so the first one, he ain't got two things, he ain't got, so this is very common slang from the USA uh, normally. And um, you haven't got is the full phrase correct. You haven't got, but you ain't got, you ain't got. So this is very fast, very natural slang from the USA. And you hear this a lot. So this is great for a student to hear this. Um, uh, it's a great example. The, uh, the second one is um, he said, they think in that. And he, he probably should have said correctly they are thinking or they could they have been thinking or but they are thinking he was missing the verb there but again this is street talk and 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 this is very common a lot of people speak this way even though it's incorrect ain't got is i would say that's correct it's very slang i would say it's correct english it's very very slang but they thinking I would say that's incorrect English because it's missing the verb. They are thinking the present continuous. So that's my critique of those. I found two of what he was saying. Yeah. Very cool. Okay, great. Anna, do you want to uh, add anything? Okay. Yes, I wrote mine down. I need a little longer with this one because this one for me had the most mistakes in terms of technical English so far um, or correct English. So um, the first, it was right about two seconds before the video count, so maybe it's cheating, but it said he done got arrested first instead of just he got arrested first. Okay. Um, I noticed a lot of people who are from Indian language or African language backgrounds will do that. I don't know if it's something different in their language group, because that's one thing I tell my students is if you can learn the phonetics and typical mistakes of your language group where people will try and make the English more similar to what they're used to or more comfortable, it can help you troubleshoot errors and know where to practice. Um, the second one I put is here is the most stupidest thing. Again, you don't need the most, just like you don't need Dunn got arrested. You just not, you just need, pardon me, he got arrested first. You don't need here is the most stupidest thing. You just need here is the stupidest thing. 
And then, um, yeah, as Daniel said, he said twice, ain't got no license, and then you ain't got no license plate on it. Um, I agree that's a mistake, like Daniel said, but I would disagree that it's correct like, um, English. I think, for me at least, I just um, sort correct English and slang. So Daniel said he doesn't think it's a mistake. I would say it's a mistake as in it's slang, but, of course, everyone has the right to speak slang. I don't really do, like, correct slang versus incorrect slang. I just do, like, correct English versus incorrect, and incorrect is, like, a synonym for slang for me. Um, and then you got unlicensed weapons. Um, it should probably be uh, you have unlicensed weapons, and then they thinking that's cool. It should just be they're thinking um, that's cool. And I don't have any critiques in terms of um, presentation whatsoever. In fact, I think his presentation was excellent. It was dynamic. I would love to watch it. It would also translate well into a YouTube short. It would make me want to click through. And I personally think um, it's, of course, different if you're teaching formal English. But I think in terms of picking something like this, that's dynamic for something like the last one that had no errors but is boring, I think this content would do better. But of course, it is different. The whole point of it is to teach formal English. So yeah, that's my take. Awesome. That was really in depth. Awesome. I think you hit a lot of the points that I was thinking about when I watched it. <laughs> yeah. Video. That that yeah, that's that's amazing. Wow, that's so cool. Uh but I have a question to you as uh, as uh, a teacher as teachers, I'd like to ask you if uh, the slang, right? Ain't and all this uh, parts of language should be taught uh and uh, should students not at least learn, but be aware of uh, when and where they can encounter uh, these parts of uh, language. And in what if if we uh, agree that uh, we should uh, teach them, how should we present it? And uh, like, um, what kind of uh, what kind of lesson should it be to uh, to present it and uh, to 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 teach those materials? I really think it's really important because you will hear it even in formal settings. You know, even if I have. I'm meeting with my boss, Chris, what if we use a swear word or an idiom and the other person doesn't know? And that can really set apart people who are just learning a language because you don't want to be doing a presentation or something and someone says, oh, well, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater and you have to be trying to process what that is or think about it. So I think it's important to teach it. I do also think we need to teach formal English and just be clear which is which. But I think if we don't teach people filler words or just expressions like saying mm, when something is good, we can really be leaving people out to hang. So that's just my take. Okay, thank you very much. Daniel, what do you think? Excellent. Yeah, I, I agree with Anna as well. Definitely should be taught. They should be definitely aware of it because it's going to hear that this is the real English that they're going to hear on the street, especially. Um, and um, what I would do in, in terms of teaching it, like we're doing right now, give them examples, show them show them video clips and the, the students will be very shocked at first. They'll be like, what did he just say? And what, the first time I would let them hear it without subtitles, second time with subtitles. And then I would write it out really clearly. And I would also write the correct way it should be with, with the correct English. So they can actually see the difference. And then I'll get them to repeat it, saying, it, imitating that guy so they can actually practice and that really gets in their heads um so that's but definitely they should definitely be able, um be learning these phrases which are like like anna said colloquial very informal slang definitely because it's all around this is what you hear everywhere now this type of language yeah thank you very much we can get to the next one right chris if you don't mind yeah, yeah okay great Okay, he tried. It's not totally gibberish. It looks like he's got the actual lines. He just didn't get off them correctly. So according to the subtitles, they're trying to say, we can bring back an actual nuclear expert. Um, so Daniel might kick my butt on this one again, but I did not find any specific errors. Um, but I would say that it was a bit monotone the way she was speaking. Um, I have a speaker in my um, regular classes. She comes back all the time um, and she uh, speaks with a lot of enthusiasm and variance and she's coming from a Chinese language background. I didn't find this with this uh, teacher speaker so I think if she would do that it would come a, a bit more clear and also a bit more space between words but I didn't find any particular uh, error. All right Daniel anything to say or add? Yeah I couldn't understand that first phrase what she was saying um, but so I listened to it the second time and I could just make out what she was saying very strong accent, a lot of mispronounced words, but it was it was a challenge to understand her. Um, but it was very in incorrect. She said, it looks like he's got the actual lines. 
he just didn't get off them correctly. So, so whatever she's trying to say there, um, it's quite mixed up. She's using a phrasal verb incorrectly, get off them correctly. Um, so I'm trying to um, work out exactly what she was trying to say there. But um, I look, gr grammatically and the pronunciation was totally off. It wasn't correct. Yeah. Yeah, I, I noticed that point that you were talking about too, and I had to listen to it a few times to try to understand it too. All right, Daniel. So you'll be responding first to this last video. Uh, three years ago, I traveled to Turkey by uh, with my friends. Uh, when we bought, when we want um, to come back, I understood that I lost my passport. What did you find in this clip? Okay, uh, this was probably the easiest clip for me. I could tell his level straight away was probably between pre-intermediate level. His first mistake was uh, two prepositions, be with, instead of with, with, be by, with, my friend. So two prepositions, bad pronunciation. Um, we want, I thought he was, wanted to say went, but then I realized we, we, we want to come back. I think he said he didn't, you put in the simple past tense where you say wanted, that was a mistake. He should have said we wanted. And then the, the last phrase was, I lost my passport, which is correct. He's missing connectors in between each sentence. It sounds very ro robotic and very, um, he's not fluent, uh, but yeah, he did a good job, but that's my critique, yeah. All right. Anna, do you have anything to add to that? Yeah, um, I think this is probably my least favorite in terms of presentation. He really didn't have good posture. He was hunched forward. And I think one thing that's important to remember is even if you have spinal issues or something, you can always kind of like perk it up for video and make an effort, you know, like even if like a hunchback or a dwarf person was looking into the thing, it will still come across nice. No, that's actually a politically correct word. You're not supposed to say midget, but you can say dwarf fairly. It changes, but you know, okay. And then also, um, I totally agree <laughs> with Daniel. I wrote down two things. Um, one, he started his whole thing with us. Uh. It's not great to use fillers, but it especially can be um, negative at the beginning. And I agree uh, with Daniel. He was so monotone. So starting with uh and then keeping that same tone, it didn't do it any favor. So he said, uh, three years ago, I traveled to Turkey with my friends. And it was so monotone. And he began with the filler. And then, yeah, it really stood out to me. Um, same as what Daniel said. He said, when we want to come back instead of when we wanted to come back. Um, I see a lot of people with English or Pakistani uh, language origins using that mistake. Like my dad's from India, but he grew up kind of English speaking. And then he came to Canada and took English university here. But uh, in Toronto, there's a lot of English and Chinese immigrants, like the city I'm from. And yeah, you hear that that misuse um, a lot. So yeah, and I just thought overall it was very drab. I don't think there was any eye contact. And I wouldn't have even wanted to be the interviewer. Like he didn't, Andre has a great sense of connecting with people on video. And I don't think he uh, had that personally. Yeah, any questions? Uh, yeah, yeah, I have a question. Yeah, so um, I guess that uh, this student has a very common fossilized error as a, he doesn't uh, use uh, past simple. Uh, I mean, the, uh, he's, he's, he doesn't change the forms of verbs in past simple. So, and uh, if it is his real fossilized error, his fossilized mistake, how would you guys try to fix it? I would start by addressing his confidence because I think if you start with criticism, it can really harm people. For example, when I was trying to learn horse riding, I had all these visions of like being in the Olympics, which I still have, um, but I still want to keep teaching English. So I would love to do that too. But um, yeah, it was so hard because there was so much criticism right off the bat when I started to take it really seriously and study with more advanced coaches. And I really wish that they would have been more encouraging. So I think first I would work on his confidence. Um, I find when my students just try and be more confident, speak into the um, into the microphone, make eye contact, keep going, use variants, and all those things are very teachable within an hour. You know, they can sound 90% better. And then other than that, I think rather than just situation for specific practice, like this exact sentence, I would try and get him more comfortable with conjugating verbs because I don't think he's that comfortable there. So I agree with Edda. Um, he could use on his, his presentation in terms of posture and presenting skills, but um, I would focus, if I was talking to him, I'd focus on all the positives, obviously, 
that um, he he did a did a great job with where he said I lost my passport. He said that perfectly correctly. Uh, his pronunciation is pretty good considering. And I would teach him the rule uh, when you put like the uh, those verbs with all the T or a D at the end. Um, I, you you must pronounce the ed like I'd be teaching him that rule. All the verbs in English, ninety percent of them in the past, you just said that. T just imagine there's a T at the end, like cook, cooked, uh, work, worked. T -t -t. It's always 90% of the time, t -t -t. there's exceptions. All the verbs with a D or a T, you can remember Donald Trump, our favorite politician, DT, all the verbs with D or T at the end, you just pronounce ed. So you can teach him one dead, remember? Start, started, uh, end, ended. As, so all the D or T, just remember that rule. But otherwise your English is awesome. I, I, I would tell him, Pronunciation's good. Try to avoid two prepositions at the same time. Uh, maybe you could just have a pause. Remember, you can pause the power of the pause. It doesn't matter to be silent. You don't have to fill the gaps with words. So you can say, by, with, just try to remember. It's okay to have, be silent and have that awkward silence. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so that's what I would say to him. Excellent, excellent. Well done, both challengers. And now our judges will give their comments and award points. Okay, before the judges award points and make a final decision about who to crown the champion of this battle, I need to remind everyone watching that the judges chose the questions, the topics, and the videos. They've had more time to think about the questions than the challengers in the battle, and they don't have to defend their answers or face a competitor. And our judges are simply providing their professional feedback. And even though they're judges, they may not always be right. So always make your own decision about what is correct or incorrect. But more importantly, always be yourself, no matter what language you speak. Our challengers are the real heroes of this battle, and we should start by applauding them for their valiant performance. Kirill, how do you think round one went? Yeah, it was it was great actually. It was great. There were a lot of like a lot of interesting opinions, a lot of interesting uh, mistakes that they uh, found out. Uh, even something that we didn't <laughs> didn't yeah. find out. Something that we didn't mention. So yeah, it was good. Uh, so yeah, the, the I guess we can start with the uh, first video clip. As for the round one, yeah. So it it was it definitely was the pre pre written speech, and that's why there were no any uh, grammatical mistakes. Uh, the vocabulary was right. Everything was cool. Yeah, but the problems were in uh, pronunciation. The pronunciation was a bit. <laughs> it's, so to say a little bit off <laughs> yeah, yeah in the first video clip right yeah 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 and i guess both of the contenders they found a lot of uh mistakes but they didn't point i mean uh they uh i mean anna she didn't point out any specific mistakes mm, and but uh, at the same time uh daniel did it so yeah. i guess uh daniel was ahead in this in this clip yeah, I I have to agree with that because he pointed out a specific mistake. Um and he was trying to talk about, you know, pronunciation of proudly. I thought that, that was good. Um and I, I was surprised that they didn't pick up on any of the other ones or they didn't mention them, like his pronunciation of the word bid. He kept <laughs> saying like bit. Mm -hmm. And to me that really stuck out. Um and I think that there was actually a grammatical mistake and um, either Daniel or I think Daniel touched on it, but he didn't understand what he said. So he, mm -hmm. he said it was something else. But at one point, he said something like has a full backing by the Russian government. Mm -hmm. And at least it sounded like that to me. It sounded like uh, not the. Mm -hmm. and, and so that stuck out to me, too. Yeah, yeah, I guess you're right. Yeah, okay, okay. So the uh, second video clip was, you know, like an influencer or a guy in his car, right? And um, I thought that they both answered very well. I, I really had nothing else to add from what they said. Yeah, same here, same here. Yeah, just, it's just, yeah, it's good. <laughs> it's But it's also good. there was, uh, you know, there was a mistake 
at the beginning and they both pointed that out, right? Mm -hmm. The verb explain. I thought that the response from Daniel to this video clip was better because it was more succinct. It was like, this was the mistake. Sure, there's some kind of pronunciation stuff going on too, but overall he's pretty fluent. I thought that that was a really good response. Whereas I thought Anna added in a lot of extra stuff that, you know, it wasn't necessary for someone to kind of understand what was wrong in this clip, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. And uh, I guess we can uh, talk a little bit about the question number three. And there was an educational video by a teacher and she was presenting uh, the topic of double negation. And uh, Daniel said that it was wrong, which... I'm not, I don't, I don't really agree with because it's, uh, it's uh, in this context, it was just the presentation. Uh, she was given some examples. So it wasn't really a mistake. And uh, uh, obviously it's not the, like the, the correct English, so to say, but it's uh, street English and it's also part of the language. And if we look at the descriptive linguistic, uh, we can accept that as, as the uh, correct uh, part of the language and uh, even native speakers if they feel in, in my opinion non-native speakers sorry uh, if they feel that this is right in this context they may use it i wouldn't be so strict about this rule and say that this is not correct, like completely not correct uh-huh well if i'm not mistaken anna also said that it wasn't correct right yeah yeah and she yeah, really yeah. didn't like the style of the video like she just really didn't like this video um and yeah, I was surprised by this too, because I thought that the teacher in the video did a really good job. <laughs> I thought that she nailed it. She she At the beginning of the video, she said that it's not right to use double mm-hmm. negation. And then after that, she said in the specific accent that she's teaching, it would be correct to use double negation. And then she even gave an example and she like changed her voice and her pronunciation to give an example that we could hear of this accent, right? Mm -hmm. I thought that was so cool that she did that. And then she went on to explain that when when speaking with that accent, it would be wrong to say it the standard way. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, so maybe that's what was confusing. To me, that was really cool. But now I see like maybe if other people got confused by it, maybe that was a little confusing in the way it was presented. but yeah, yeah I maybe we should have given the, uh, the whole video to, to, or just maybe the first part of the video. Uh, yeah, I guess so. Maybe, maybe it was our fault <laughs> here. <laughs> well, I, I think that the teacher in the video was right. And I think that the challengers didn't really point that out. They mm. said that she was wrong. But I think that Daniel, in his response, actually said there's a difference between these different types of English and like that would be okay I think he characterized it as street English or something like that Mm -hmm. so he at least said like this is acceptable and and so I felt like he he was less wrong (laughs) (laughs) Uh, if we're saying who's right and wrong I mean Mm -hmm. I would I would have to say that Daniel gave a slightly better response uh, yeah, I guess so. But uh, yeah, I, I still think that uh, they shouldn't be like winner here. It's just yeah. a draw. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, it's a tie. So the fourth video clip, this one was very similar to the, to the previous one where mm-hmm. instead, but instead of the teacher teaching about an accent and how they use English differently, it was mm-hmm. an actual speaker who was just speaking. So again, I kind of felt like they both could have answered a lot better because mm-hmm. like they were just comparing it straight up to standard English. And mm. we could have gone into, okay, if this is a dialect or an accent or something special, a variation of English, then you know, what are the rules of that? And how does that work? And we could have talked more about that. So like mm-hmm. I would have liked to see something more like that. Um I think Anna demonstrated more technical skills because she went through point by point in the video and basically said, this isn't correct by standard English. This isn't correct by standard English. Mm -hmm. But her approach of like slang means it's not correct. I don't think that that was completely on point, but but I felt like she really demonstrated that she can break down the mistakes. But yeah, I think they both could have given a lot better of an answer here. What about you? 
Yeah, I agree. I think uh, the small note, you know, the small little note that there is a st standard English and uh, there is other ways of uh, saying different things. Uh, and uh, in terms of like in terms of standard English, it is wrong, but it's still not wrong in the whole picture of uh, all uh, English speakers, right? And the right. all natives, because English is different in any part of the world. Uh, so yeah, I don't think that uh, I don't think that uh, the slang that they count as a mistake should be counted as a mistake. Is supposed to count it as a mistake because yeah, ain't got it's it's used everywhere, and I don't think only. Mm, uh, uh, only, I mean, I think everyone uses that. Like, everyone yeah, it's in even in like, text. like English textbooks for people who are learning English. They have songs that include like, "I ain't got no something." Yeah, exactly, exactly, <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah, I don't know about the student books, by the way, but I guess there are some rules. Uh, there are some, you know, like know that or uh, just uh, just in case you have to know that some people use you know, this as a uh, replacement for have yeah. or for don't. So, yeah, I guess I guess there is this one. I guess there is that rule in some textbooks. So, yeah, I don't think they're supposed to be uh, it's supposed to be counted as mistake. Uh, but yeah, yeah, uh, I agree with you that Anna represented uh, it more correctly, I would say. Yeah, because she was given the uh, she was. Yeah, she was trying to show that there are different ways of pronouncing that. Um, I mean, different ways of saying that. So yeah, I guess. Well, I think this one really highlights like the difference in how you and I are approaching the judging mm -hmm. because for me, it's like if they gave a prescriptive answer, like mm -hmm. this is not correct or this is correct, mm -hmm. that, that like that holds a lot of value to me, I think. Because mm -hmm. if someone comes to you as a student, they're just like, this is not correct. Uh, I feel like, you know, you're trying to turn the switches in your brain. You're like, oh, okay, I won't say that. Anymore. <laughs> so it can kind of be misleading. And that's why, like, in this case, I would, if I had to choose one person here, even though Anna demonstrated technical skills in correcting the mistakes, mm -hmm. I feel like Daniel, Daniel's response was closer to the truth of, mm. hey, people speak like this. Hey, this is this kind of slang thing. And, and uh, this is this kind of accent or, or variation of English. And so like, yeah, by the standard, it wouldn't be correct to say this or this. But in that aspect, I felt like he was stronger here too. Mm -hmm. All right. So uh, video clip number five, mm -hmm. this was a teacher of Chinese speaking uh -huh. English and teaching Chinese, right? Yeah, both of them, they noticed the pronunciation mistake, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, and uh, uh, firstly, I was thinking about other mistake that uh, why we chose this clip. I was thinking about uh, totally gibberish, the part was totally gibberish. I mean, they didn't uh, see this, pro didn't see this mistake. And you told me that this is actually not a mistake uh, in general. So I guess, uh, yeah, I guess the only problem here is uh, pronunciation, uh, which they uh, both found as far as I remember, they uh, found out this mistake, they point out at this point. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I was, I was surprised uh, they didn't pick up on another mistake, how she pronounced the word um, nuclear. Mm -hmm. Instead, she said something like nuclear uh -huh. and stressed the second syllable. That was something that I picked up on. But again, it's like, if you're we had more time to review it, so. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. But it's not, um, you know, sometimes when you hear the accent, I wouldn't say that she has a very thick accent, but uh, when you hear an accent, you're just getting used to the things that you hear and you don't even point out the mistakes, pronunciation mistakes, right? Because it just, you know, you know that there is something unusual, uh, but you you don't know what, or you don't just, you know, you don't have time to uh, to check it out or to point it out. So, yeah. Definitely. So what do you think about the last one? The last one. The last one was the most interesting, I guess, because it was the, uh, the not teaching video, but it was the uh, English uh, learner and uh, he was at very low level. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, he had, Plenty of mistakes, plenty of them in pronunciation, in uh, grammar. Um, so yeah, and uh, both of them, they found uh, the obvious mistake like uh, misuse of uh, a past simple, uh, and uh, they found some pronunciation errors. Uh, 
Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I would like to see them be more specific about the pronunciation errors and be more specific about the examples. Mm -hmm. Like at the beginning of the video, he's pronouncing th as t, t, and mm -hmm. uh, his w sound like v, v, mm -hmm. and yeah, and then and then the thing that caught my attention because I'm not, I don't know the background of this person who's speaking, right? I don't know anything about them from that clip. Um, I know that he was talking about going to Turkey, but I noticed that when he was saying I, the pronoun I, at the end of the clip, that it had this like special sound that usually Arabic speakers mm. make. They're speaking English. And it was like, oi. Yeah, he makes some sounds, I would say soft, a little bit. Yeah, basically he had a lot of mistakes and uh, that is absolutely fine. I'm not like judging him for mistakes because he's yeah. a, uh, yeah, he's just beginner. Well, and he's putting himself him. out there. He's on this video trying, mm -hmm. like showing other people. So like- And doing a great job actually. Right, right. <laughs> this is the, it's really cool that this video was there for us to use. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, um, actually, yeah, I yeah, gave some follow-up question about his fossilized errors. But actually, I didn't uh, hear any uh, exact answers about yeah. like uh, how they can like make it in the classroom. What can they do? What exercises, what tasks uh, they can do to um, improve their fossilized errors? I heard that Anna said about the post posture, posture, and uh, Daniel said something about getting the confidence uh, uh, of, yeah. of of, of uh, the student. But I wanted to hear something, you know, more uh, practical. Mm, but that's yeah i guess that's that's not a problem okay let's count the points for round one okay i've decided to award daniel three points and anna two points because i feel like daniel's answers were more succinct they are more to the point um i feel like he really shined in his explanations more well Anna was really strong technically. Like there were some specific points that she could that she could show and explain. And that was really cool too to see both of them. But this round I have to give to Daniel, but it was close. So three and two. That's very uh, interesting because I have uh, the opposite situation. I have to give. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I have to give two points to Daniel and three points to Anna uh, because. Some answer, answers uh, were um, like more close to me, closer to me. Uh, and uh, I think that she was more precise and uh, not, mm, I would say, not that adamant in some, in some questions. And uh, I think that her answers were uh, more close to the truth and they weren't that one side. But it's just what I think. That's my point. They weren't yeah. one-sided? Yeah, one-sided. They weren't one-sided. Uh -huh. Gotcha. Uh, people are going to think that we colluded, that we, that we agreed to do this so that it would be a tie or something. But really, I promise everybody, we, <laughs> didn't, we didn't talk about this before. Or maybe not. No one knows. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Write more comments down below to, and then we see. <laughs> okay, that's round one. Stay tuned for round two. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you don't miss the next round and our future battles. Click subscribe now. Battle English at WeSpeakEnglish.com. Do you agree with the judge's decision? Write a comment under this video and tell us your opinion. Learn more about Battle English at WeSpeakEnglish.com.